And you know, there was another time that uh, when I was a deputy, there was two of us on, a good friend of mine I went to high school with, that's, he eventually retired up here at Boise PD. He was driving through a small town in, in, in there in the county called Wendell, and they had a Maverick station, and it was about two o'clock in the morning. It was February, and it was cold. It was really cold. And uh, he calls me and he says, hey, I just got, this guy just flagged me over here at the Maverick, and he's got this girl in his car that's all covered in blood, young girl. Well, I said, I'll get me there in a minute. So we get to talking to this girl, and uh, this farmer picked her up walking down the road. She was walking into town off the freeway. And um, um, had her in the car, and we were standing there trying to talk to her, and she couldn't hear us. She was having a hard time hearing us, but she had all these blood speckles all over her. We were finally able to get out of her that she was with her uncle headed to Boise um, to kill her, to kill, um, to blow up his his um, ex girlfriend's new boyfriend. Okay, where's he at? She says I, he's he's down on the freeway somewhere. I said all right, we'll go try and find him. She said, well, I got to tell you, he said he, he did tell me that if we got pulled over by the police, that I was supposed to hand him the the, the gun in the jockey box and he would let me out before he shot the cops. Oh, well, thanks for telling us that. And like I say, it's, it's two o'clock in the morning and it is, it is below zero. And so the, the, the other deputy and I, we split up. Well, he goes to one exit and I go to the other so we can come into the car like this. Well, I get to the freeway and sure enough, there's this, there's this car sitting on the side of the freeway on the, on the off ramp. Under, you can see it under the, the freeway lights. I'm just sitting there, but I looked hard enough, and up on the bank, away from the car, there was a guy sitting on the on the on the on the bank over there, just sitting there. So we we approach, I keep the car his car between he and I, and we start yelling at the guy to get his hands up. And he's just sitting there, just sitting there, like just sitting, not doing anything. So I finally get, you know, I approach his car. I, his car is between he and I for my cover. And I get up the car and it's like, I mean, the windows are all smoked up and there's, it's just, I didn't know what the, what, what's going on here. So I finally start, so then I yell at the guy and he lays back on his back and he sticks his right hand in his coat. So I'm yelling, yeah, I said, I think he's got the gun. So we keep yelling at him and yelling at him and yelling at him and finally he, he raises his left arm, and it's gone. There's nothing there. And um, I get to look, and I, I yelled at him. I said, he doesn't have a left arm. Well, get his right arm. And pretty quick, he raises his right arm. So, and he sits up. Well, we can see, you know, we've got both his hands, so we approach him. And when I got closer, I can see his left leg is gone also. I go, what in the hell is going on here? Well, you know, it's... <laughs> About that time, the, you know, everybody's heard what's going on, and the ISP's coming, and everybody's showing up, and we're up there, and I, and I put a cuff on his, on his right hand, and I'm, you know, what am I going <laughs> to hook it to his belt, or what's going on? And I remember the, we had a woman ISP trooper at the time, and she comes running up, she goes, you got his hands? And I said, yeah, I got his right one right here. And she says, well, where's the left one? I said, I think it's back in the car. <laughs> I don't know where, I, I don't know where it's at. <laughs> and, she, and she jumps back and goes, oh, my God. <laughs> and uh, it turns out he was going down the freeway late at night throwing out dynamite, lighting sticks of dynamite and throwing them out the window. Well, he, he'd, he'd lit one and went to throw it out and he hit the window and come back in and he picked it up, got it about right here, and it went off. So that's why he couldn't hear us. That's why she couldn't hear us. And I called the sheriff at the time, Robert, and I said, this is what we got going on. He goes, Put him in an ambulance, send him to Boise. <laughs> it's a good idea. <laughs> no charges? He said, no charges. <laughs>